Hi, I'm Terry Genderbender of Le Butcherettes, and you are here watching AMBY. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from your favorite site, Ambi, and I'd like to welcome you to our interview with Terry from Le Butcherette. Hi! Thank you for having me again. Yes, oh my it's God. my pleasure. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm excited and nervous, but but it's good. It's super not not good. bad nerves. Not bad nerves. Like super excited. Yeah. Little yeah. anxiety. Gotta yeah. gotta let the sweat kind of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my God, yes. But at least it it could be. I showered this morning. So it could yeah. be worse. It could be worse, as, as, <laughs> as my mother says. It could always be worse. I mean, yes, it can. It can. So you are now touring North America. We've been following each other on Instagram since we first spoke back yeah. in June. And it's so cool to see all the awesome things you've been up to. So how is this tour treating oh, you so thank far? Thank you. Look who's talking. Oh, my God. You've been <laughs> woo, conquering the thank world. You. So congratulations for that. Thank you so much. Uh, basically, it's been it's been very well for us on on the basics, health, which I, I always talk about. It's really important to always drink lots of water. Um, try not to drink too much coffee because especially in the van you can get very um uh what's that that jittery that or jittery and then tunnels it t where you just feel like you're like a horse you just see a tunnel all of a sudden just going on forever and you get that uh, anxiety attack so basically none of that has been going on so it's all been good and um we played Columbus the other night, and that was surprisingly mind blowing because it was full of people. I was, because, like I said, I'm a pessimist. And <laughs> you so never I, know who's gonna show yeah, up, or, or if anyone is gonna show up at all. So, like, being able to talk to you that that adds a big oomph to to this journey because it's like that's what it's all about: talking to people and meeting people and trying to make your music better. Vote for me. <laughs> The first time I saw you live was last summer when you came through with the Melvins, and I just could not believe your energy, your charisma, your, like a little firecracker on stage, like nonstop moving. It was just fantastic. Where does that burst of energy come from? Does it hit you before you hop on stage? Does it come looking at all the people you're about to perform to? Wow, it's definitely, it has everything to do with that, all those elements. It's, the, the public, the audience is very important because you feed off of each other's energy. I think definitely if one person is just going to be mad dogging you the whole time, it'll eventually get to your psyche yeah. and it'll make you do crazy things, <laughs> negative things even, like breaking the microphone stand or going up to that person and pu pushing him, things like that that aren't very um, ladylike. But that's what happens. But if people are very giving in their energy, then it could also be a very positive experience where... Some, it happened in Chicago. People were singing along to the words of the songs. I'm not used to that kind of uh, support. <laughs> so it's very, it's, yeah, it's a give and take. It's like a marriage. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the marriage is like, but, but you know what I mean. It's, it's <laughs> like a teamwork. Yes. Teamwork. Teamwork. And yeah. I noticed that Omar Rodriguez Lopez's yes. brother, Marcel, is actually opening for you. Yes. Oh. You've worked with Omar so many times in the past on past records. So how did this collaboration or, you know, him opening for you on this tour, his little brother, how'd that come about? Ah, he's doing us a favor because he really has no reason to, to be yeah. uh, be on the road with us. He, he he always gets lots of different offers from other people, especially the type of music that he plays is 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 great because it can it can be for general any kind of band. It can transcend to whatever. exactly exactly and and so after after with us he's going to go on tour with Autolux and yeah you guys should catch Eureka the Butcher he's great because he does it all um he's playing the bass drum while also playing keyboards and singing into the mic microphone and yes it's basically uh, his own take on Fania um, and the recompositions of his of his of his mind it's yeah I call him the the, the, the future music man yeah yeah the, the music man of the future the yeah. one man band future music yeah, man yeah exactly <laughs> Well, a raw youth has now been unleashed to the world since we spoke. Oh, it has, yeah. and it is such a fantastic record. We've been listening to it oh, so yeah. much. Thank you so you much. You are welcome. Thank you. How does it feel to finally have shared it with everybody? Oh, I feel good. It's like yeah. a weight's off the back. I can start focusing on the next one now. I have some demos for the next one. Oh, really? But but I yeah. But I also okay. have to appreciate this this process, like which soak is it all playing in. the record. Yeah, soak it all in. Appreciate the moment and don't always try to overdo yourself because I realize that that when I do overdo myself, I don't know if it happens to you, especially when you when you have so much work going on, your your hair starts to fall out and you're like brushing your hair, and before you notice, you have you're like a cat. You shed so much. So I'm trying to. Not stress out so much yes. and, and appreciate the moment. So it came out, the record came out, and 
now is just to enjoy the play. Embracing everything that comes yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. I think it, does that happen to, to you sometimes? The stress when, will build up. You feel a little claustrophobic at times, yeah, right? Exactly. No, it, it happens. Yeah. But then you have to, as you said, embrace the cool things, you yeah. know, like sitting down with Terry yeah. from the Butcherettes. Oh, yeah. I'm, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my God. Look who's talking. Sorry. The song I'm really loving on the album, I have to say, is probably my favorite, is They Fuck You Over. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank the plea you. for rebellion against everyone who screwed you over in the past. Yeah. For you, did that come from a certain experience where someone did that to you, or what kind of inspired the direction of lyrically? Ooh, I think all the ac- accumulation of many different people or situations that, that were done not just to me, but to my parents, who were, who were immigrants from Mexico that went and from Spain that went to, to, the, to the U.S., the, the, the country of, of opportunity and whatnot, you know, all those yeah. things. And But... Um, they fought through that and so basically they fuck you over is because of that of all the the the, the people that get picked on and, and and that are sometimes too scared to say anything but their actions will prove stronger than words so my dad instead of being violent with his boss that 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 was racist, racist yeah. um he works extra harder and then he got promoted and then that boss eventually got replaced by another one and yeah you just prevail with your hard work One thing I want to bring up with you is since the album dropped, you actually did a cover of I Feel You by Depeche Mode. Yeah. I really wanted to bring this up because I love new wave music. And it was this almost like Western. I can imagine you, the video, like riding a horse and singing a lot. Like it was such a cool take. I I love it. Um, Why did you decide to cover that classic compared to any other song you could have put your spin on? That is all thanks to With Lions. This is this great band. Um, They're great writers. They actually, actually also have a... Uh, a licensing company where they write western songs or all types of music basically so it makes okay that makes perfect sense so they're really far out there um, and uh they they worked in the past with the anthony parks which is in our in our other band bosnia rainbows he's another genius that's just composes all the time and so i'm very lucky that they asked me to to partake in the project and and then they asked omar also to, to play the guitar on it and i guess i guess it was fun also on a learning process because you learn constantly of other people's takes on it and and uh Chris, christian that um he, he's the one that oriented me on how he wanted the vocals to be sung oh, okay so that was really cool to be because i wasn't i didn't know i could sing that that style it was really smooth and laid yeah, back like, a little oh, jazzy almost. You. i was like wow well, <laughs> okay thank you for believing in me and and, and and taking that out of me because i had no idea so thank you christian that's awesome yeah. there's something <laughs> There's something just so aesthetically cool about the band, especially the way you come out all wearing red. And that when I first interviewed you, you came out wearing this really pretty red dress, and I thought you just liked the color, but it seems that there's much more to the color and meaning behind it. Can you tell me just a bit more about the color red to you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, because first the band started playing in, in red uh, bloody aprons, and I was doing that for a while, and, it, and and I felt it was appropriate to use because for me it represented the kidnappings of Las Muertas de Juarez. And, and where are there, where are all these missing women? Why aren't they coming up? Where are the answers? Why are the, why is the government keeping information from the people? Why are the police locked in somehow with the narco? So it's all these all all these situations that kept the woman, of course, historically repeatedly throughout time, down with the foot on her throat. That to me was what 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 the bl- blood represented. But blood eventually uh, it, it it took the form of the color red which i think is a little more uh, graceful and, and and i'm older now i'm not 17 I, I can't always be wearing a bloody apron until i'm 40 you know you, you, you gotta evolve a little bit <laughs> yeah so i think that's what it means to me at least but it could be abstract i, I don't want to be a dictator and say this has to mean yeah this to you if if, if someone sees the color red and with us on stage they hopefully they can also take their own uh take on it and be like oh this color red reminds me of my mother she used to love it so i don't know basically i, li- I respect other people's also interpretations yeah. well, i think red's the color for passion definitely right yeah. i believe passion. so and when you watch you guys on stage it's just you're beaming with passion oh, thank like you. you take on almost this whole new character in a sense when oh, you're on stage you do, so do you much. notice that or is it just from a viewer's perspective i think i i do notice it only because off stage I feel even uncomfortable within my own skin. And when I'm up there, I feel free. I feel like I can do anything and not be judged for it. Maybe, maybe of course, there's always going to be judges. But but in that bubble, you, you just feel so liberated because it's something that you truly like doing. And and I don't know, I guess... Because even sometimes with a, with a couple or, 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 I don't know, or a friend, sometimes being too open with someone can be scary. Yeah. That's kind of how it feels when you're on stage. You're opening your heart to someone, 
and you don't know what it's gonna be but that fear is not really there i don't it's kind of like numb the adrenaline yeah i don't know i'm, I'm, I'm it's the philosophy <laughs> of what it feels like to be on stage <laughs> But you, 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 you must feel that too when you, when, when you, every oh, person that you talk before to before interviews, right? the anxiety builds up. Yeah. Then you kind of just have to, as you mentioned before, embrace yeah. everything that's going yeah. on. Yeah, because it changes completely. Like when we're talking, you also seem like a little more relaxed yeah. too. Yeah, same here. Before we spoke, I was a little nervous too, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> it was like we were both up behind the door doing jumping jacks yeah. and stuff, getting ready for the interview. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but it works. Yeah, gotta do a little warm up. I'd say we're doing pretty well right now. Yeah, I think so. I really, yeah, and, and the lights are really nice and warm, yeah. so it's it's a good good tropical climate. Well, in our first interview, we were briefly talking about cheesy Hollywood movies and how, as a band, the Butchettes love going out and seeing films oh, together. Yeah. And we're also kind of diving into product placement and how ridiculous it can be at times. Have you seen any movies recently where that just completely threw you off, or you thought, ah, oh, this is just why am I watching this? Oh my. Okay. Well, a really. Not not in, in a cheesy way, but mind disturbing way. Okay. The witch. Have you seen that? No, yet? I haven't. It's it's with a double V. Okay. So it kind of. I saw an ad for that the other day. Oh my god! <laughs> it, when you look at that movie, it feels like you watch The Ring or something. Like you were not supposed like to just, see it. You're captivated by. Yeah, it. and 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 I had nightmares, and I watched it three times wow. in two days. I watched it. And the first day I watched it twice, and the second day I watched it again, and and now I can't have stop having nightmares about it. Oh no. Yeah. It's really dark. I don't want to spoil anything. But, okay. But yeah. yeah so it's a must see. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. And really well done. Yeah. There was, I think the director's his name is Robert Eggers, and it was his first film. So he he killed it right. He, he okay. found the right team, the great cast, and yeah, his first freaking film. I envy him. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a masterpiece. Oh God. She's getting into her music. Her band's warming up downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help it, right? Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't help it. I'm, I'm a narcissist. I have to love my own music. <laughs> <laughs> Just to wrap things up today, Terry, anything you want to say to all of the Le Butcherettes fans out there who are going to be viewing the interview? Oh, please give us a chance. Listen to more of our music. And, and don't give up on us. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of exploring different sounds. So if the future, if the music stops being what it is, Please give it a chance. Just it, 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 artists deserve to grow and change constantly. Yeah. We can't always be wearing that that bloody apron or or that that, that pink lipstick forever. It's a metaphor. That's what I meant by that. The pink <laughs> lipstick part. Yeah, I don't know what. I can think of a I better one. I love when you go on these tangents. I, I just I I adore it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you oh, so so you. much. So good speaking with you always. Oh, good seeing you too. You always look so fresh, so healthy, <laughs> so full of juice. Thank you. I try. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't try. It comes naturally. Thank you. <laughs> Remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at amusicblogia.com for exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite bands. We'll see you next time.